Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So you do know that the first civil war was really not about race, it was about the economy. And Harriet Tubman was a spy working for the Masonic orders. They even showed you this in the movie when she was inducted into a society and they speak about the Underground Railroad. Those people on the Underground Railroad were Masonic. And because we were going into the Industrial Revolution, Google the Civil War. Google the Industrial Revolution. Google the time frame where Harriet Tubman was freeing the people because I'm going to go back and do all three of those things as soon as I'm done making this video. And you should see that it was all a setup because they were going from one system into another system. And so there was no need for slavery because black people had invented things. We were inventors. We have invented many things. You can find out about this on social media, on TikTok, Google once again. And so we invented things such as the cotton gin and there was just simply no need for slaves because the wealthy people in the northern part of the country watch the Gilded Age. It was on HBO. It should be on On Demand if you have um, Xfinity. You can find it, I'm sure, even I think on Hulu and um, YouTube and places. Watch the Gilded Age and see what and understand that, see and understand that time period was directly after Civil War. Directly from slavery to Civil War to all of a sudden Black people are owning businesses and printing newspapers and all of these things because the wealthier Black people who were associated with the Masons had education. They kept the Bibles from us. Africans came to the Americas as Christians, specifically from the Congo, and had to run from South Carolina, from South Carolina. I'm sounding a little country. <laughs> I do have some North Carolina roots. They ran from South Carolina to Florida, which was then, I believe, Spanish territory and Catholic territory because they were Catholics. But the slave owners refused to allow people to own Bibles because it was illegal, according to British law, to enslave Christians. And so then they changed the law and made the definition of a Christian someone who is da -da -da -ba -ba -sha -da -hai, someone who is a white free person. They changed the law. So that then when they gave Bibles, they, they gave Bibles which had been altered, where many passages and paragraphs have been removed. See, there's nothing new under the sun. They're going to do the same thing again. They're even opening portals and removing parts of the Bible and changing them. This is why it says that you don't put wine skin, you don't put new wine into new bottles. You know they only had wine skins. You know they only had clay pots and vessels made of, you know, clay, wine skins, animal skins, and other things. They did not have bottles. They did not make things out of glass. You've heard that you take sand and that the glass comes from sand. That They weren't doing that. So how does your King James Bible, the one specifically I have from the year I was born in 1979, specifically, and it's the, the, the copy, the print, the one I have was printed in 1979. Why does it now say bottles? When they did not have bottles at that time. And when that specific Bible that I have, which is from the year I was born, that Bible belonged to my grandmother. And I have been reading from that Bible since 2009. And from 2009 until I don't know what year, it said wineskins. And when the people would begin to speak about the portals, I thought, oh, they're crazy. Until I looked into my own personal Bible. See, Atlantis was sunk for a reason because they got too high and mighty. And then the one who sits on high and looks low, the most high God, sunk them into the ocean. And again, I say history repeats itself. And so they did not need slaves anymore. And so Harriet Tubman was not taking people to freedom. You hear that she shot people because, you know, she's not going to get caught and let you ruin what she's doing. So if you want to be enslaved, she'd rather for you to be dead. These are lies. She did that to cover up the fact 
that she was working for some other organization, the Masonic people, the government people, moving blacks into the North where they're going to need a workforce, where they would pay you, but pay you very little because they were going into a different system. Some people got paid a lot. Again, you started having these hierarchies where wealth and commerce and capitalism was the new system. They took us from one system to another. And then they pushed us into the cities. And then when we began to prosper again, they brought drugs into the community. They brought violence. They created gangs. You know, the government works with these gangs and the mafia and the cartels and the Masonic orders and the brotherhoods. It's all working together for the will of their God, which is Satan. The illuminated ones, the ones that are so intelligent and they have knowledge and they have been enlightened because they have been given the information concerning what is going to happen and the way they have decided to reshape and reform the world in a new way, to reorder the world in a new way. And so now we're coming back into a time where we're about to have civil war again. But the Blacks don't know how to hunt. They don't know how to farm because we were pushed into the cities once they took us out of slavery from one system to another. And they always use our people. Be careful with any Black man that you see with much, much power and influence in the world of politics and religion and shaking hands with dignitaries and kings and presidents and so on and so forth because they're always a part of the system because they have been initiated. So that's just a little bit of knowledge for you guys on tonight. Once again, you know, it's a sad situation, but it's nothing we can do. All I can say is pray. Pray and talk to God because Jesus Christ is on his way. You need to get a Bible, read it, and do what it say. I pray that God blesses you, but you have to repent. You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to actually read that Bible and do what it says and seek God's face concerning the specific instructions for your life because many of you must leave this country forever. I'm telling you to sell your house and quit your job and leave or you can die because the spies are here. The operatives are here. Everything is planned. Everything is situated. Everything is planned and situated. And we are behind, especially as black people. It's going to hurt us the most because we have not prepared. Some of that is our fault. You chose to fornicate and have sex and smoke weed and drink and pop mollies and listen to Beyonce and Lil Wayne. Because they put the drugs on your community. But they did not put but they did not put the crack in your mouth. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen anywhere in this church on tonight? They did not put the crack in your mouth, in your mama's mouth. We made the choices that we wanted to make. We did what we wanted to do. And sin, the Bible says, is a reproach to any nation. Even the nation of black people scattered to the four winds, the children of Israel. The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom God scattered us because of our sins. And he said, you're focusing on these other gods, and I'm going to scatter you. And when I scatter you, you're going to continue to worship those other gods. And when you continue to worship those other gods, I'm going to send you into slavery. And did he not do it? Didn't he do it? Won't he do it? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, won't he do it? 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 Sent you right into slavery because you was playing with him on his time. Don't play with God. Talking to myself and you. You played with God on his time. Scattered us. You don't even know who you are. Go to the elders, you Yoruba people. You Gadangbe people. You Bantu people. You Aromo people. You Falasha people. Go to the elders. And they'll tell you, oh, we were enslaved in Egypt. We came from the Northeast. They'll tell you, the Akan, the Ashanti, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know you're calling yourself Africans. Who gave you that name? A Roman man named Africanus gave you that name? Who, who told you that you were Nigeria? Who told you? Who told you? What white man 
had a gas company or oil company and decided to name your land Shakarabonsokoi after a British company, you should have cut their heads off. But the love of money is the root of all evil. Have it your way, saith the Lord. I hear the Lord say, have it your way. Have it your way because he tried to do it his way. Tina Turner said, you know, we, we could have done this nice and easy, but you don't like it nice and easy. So we're going to give it to you nice and rough. That's the message of the Lord. That's the message of the Lord. It's about to be nice and rough. Pack up your things and go home. You're from Nigeria. Leave America. You from the If you are from Africa, go back. You are from Latin America, go back. If you are from Asia, go gather your coins, get your money together and get the hell up out of here because the United States of America is about to be no more. And again, as I've said, it's all been planned and they're very sneaky because as I said, history repeats itself. They went from one system to another. Harriet Tubman wasn't for us. She was for the system she became. She probably, she started off good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. She started off good and then she got with them folks and they was just using her to bring people from one system to another. And to be honest, it was way better than slavery. Now let's not get it twisted. Now come on, let me pause for a second. Let me pause and rewind because it was better than slavery. She ain't know too much about masonry. They claim to be Christians and they love God and all of that. She didn't know. Okay. And I, I'm sure she learned. It wasn't too innocent and learned some things as things went on. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure she thought it was for the most part what was going to be best. And it probably was. You know, some of the Masons, again, I've got Masons in my family, you know. You get an education and you can get a little coins and help the family and do well. You know, Skull and Bones and Harvard and Yale and do all of that because you want to be somebody. Uppity and bougie. Trying to be, you know, amongst the elite and the wealthy. And all, do I see Jesus? The wrong, the, Jesus was slaying the wealthy and the elite and reading them for filth. That's why they killed him. The Bible says, and they were removed with envy because the religious leaders was jealous of Jesus. They said, okay, now we got to kill him. So they went from saying he was crazy. They said he was possessed. They said that the spirit working from through him was really not the Holy Spirit. It was the devil. They going to hell because they blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Be careful what you say. Especially when you talk about my Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, because everything he did was through the power of God. And then you got some people out here who you are accusing of being witches and they're not. And then you got some people out here who you are calling prophet and they're witches. Y'all are not ready for me on this day or any other day. Welcome to year 44. <laughs> some things don't change. I stay on the wall. No time for celebrations. I'm sad. I'm not, I'm not celebrating. There's nothing to celebrate. How can we sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? How can we sing the songs of Zion in a strange land where my people have been scattered and peeled? No time for celebration. I'm on the war path. I'm on this wall. Gonna watch the pageants a little bit to just, you know, try to forget some of the horrible things going on in the world, but never forget and never think for one second that I have forgotten. Okay, they've planned it all. They planned it all. And I'm sure, as I said, they thought that they was doing the right thing, but it was all a trick and a trap. And I'm telling you right now, if you listen to these politicians, if you listen to these preachers, you are falling into a trick and into a trap because they are telling you what you want to hear. And because you are so prideful and you think you know everything and you're so wise and you've got so much discernment and you got so much Holy Ghost that can't nobody tell you nothing. That's how you're going to be tricked. And that's how you are being tricked. And that's why you trust people that you should not trust. You trust your bishops and their wives. You trust the governors and the presidents. You trust these preachers and your husbands and your children and your wives and your friends and your neighbor. And you should put no trust in no man. The Bible says, trust God and let him be true and every man a liar. If you are not willing to forsake your mother and father, you are not worthy for me. The Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. And y'all want to talk to me about funerals. Didn't I tell you in 2020 I wasn't going to no funerals? The Bible said, let the dead bury the dead because see, you're going to a funeral, but it's going to be your funeral. Going to a funeral and don't know that the funerals that you will go to, will, the next one's going to be you going to be in the casket yourself. I saw it in the vision. I saw it in the vision. He said, let the dead bury the dead. I saw it. I understood it. I said, oh, my Lord God, 
a woman on YouTube years ago, back 2009, 2010, Ruby's Table Talk. The skeletons, they was at a funeral and they was, skeletons were standing around the daggone casket. The Lord said, let the dead bury the dead. And I saw the vision and I saw the color of the casket. And there I was in 2020 in real life looking at my grandmother's casket. And I said, and this is what I saw in the vision. This is what I saw in the vision. It was a funeral and this was the color of the casket. And this is what I saw. And I couldn't see the faces of the people. I could not see the faces of the people, but I could see the casket. And when it happened in real life, I said, oh my God, now I'm living physically in the vision. Turn my head away from the casket. And keep it moving because God said, let the dead, dead bird of death. Don't worry about friends and family. Don't worry because they, they don't listen to the prophets because they think they're prophetic. You know, Moses' sister was a prophet. But God said, okay, yeah, I talk to you, sweetheart. But the difference is I speak to Moses face to face. The difference is I have chosen him to be the leader because he said, I choose the debased. You know, debased means defiled. And I choose the foolish. So you might be wise. You might got more money. You might got more intelligence. You might got better jobs. But God didn't choose the wise. He chose the foolish. You might be good and holy and righteous and live the good life. But he don't choose those who are good and holy and righteous. He chooses the debased and the defiled. So when you're judging the homosexuals and you're judging the strippers and you're judging the porn stars and you're judging the crackheads and you're judging and you're judging and you're judging and you're judging. And God said, I'm also judging. And I said, I have chosen them. Now, to whom much is given, much is required. So if you've really been called and chosen, you got to be very, 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 very careful because our judgment in heaven from God is going to be worse than everyone else's judgment. Because when God calls you to be an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, deacon, whatever, there is harsher judgment. He is a consuming fire and you're going to step into the fire. And everything is going to be burnt away. And the only thing that's going to be left is whatever God says can be left. I saw that in the vision. He burnt everything. I said, Jesus, he snatched me a ball of flame. Swash, snatched me into this huge. I was in a very dark place. You know, the Bible says that he dwells in clouds of thick darkness. And I was in a very dark place. And there was a huge, just fire bigger than anything you could imagine. I don't know where I was in this spirit realm, somewhere in the 10th heaven with the Lord God Almighty. And he just snatched me. I said, Jesus, no. I was trying to cover my face and hide. And he reached out a ball of flame and snatched me. And then now I'm engulfed in this fire, begging God, begging for my life, thinking, oh, this is it. He said, I'm getting all the bad stuff out. And I said, there's not going to be anything left. God didn't argue with me because even as a child, when God is telling me he's getting the bad, you snatch me into this fire because you're getting the bad stuff out. Well, I don't mean no harm. I know that you're supposed to know everything because you are God. But let me tell you something. It ain't going to be nothing left if you get all the bad stuff out. You know, the Bible says there's no good thing dwelleth in the flesh. That's why it says flesh and blood don't inherit the kingdom of God. Because there's no good thing in the flesh. This is revelation God gave me before I ever read it in a scripture, before I ever saw it in a book. The revelation was given to me as God had snatched me into himself. And I looked at my hands and they looked brand new. And I looked at my feet and they did too, because I was invisible, see-through, golden, transparent. And instead of bones, I had no bones. I had no veins. I had no tendons. I had no blood. I had nothing in me but fire of the Holy Ghost. You know, Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. So to those of us who are chosen, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. So I've been praying on my birthday, watching the pageants, enjoying my own company, enjoying myself, because this is the last year that I spend in the United States of America. And for those who are not going with me, you just will not go, be drowned. Like Pharaoh's army that drowned in the Red Sea because they wanted to complain because God chose who Moses is. You know, that's been prophesied to me more than once. I'm holding my gift by the tail, by the tip, like that rod, because Moses was afraid. I thank God for that prophecy that came through that man that just brushed on through true gospel Baptist back in the day. Hallelujah. Saw him again at another church. Couldn't talk. 
because he was having some visions about what's going on with the evil in the church the Lord was ministering to me. So I said, leave him alone because he was just looking like I ain't even trying to be bothered. I'm thinking, okay, well, pray for me because I'm struggling with some of the same things that they're struggling with in this church that I can discern and I can discern that you can discern that they got some stuff going on in this church that ain't right. So I'm not going to bother you, but while you're praying, keep me in your prayers. And don't forget that the Lord said, I've had this gift since I was little, born with this gift. But it's a little bit frightening sometimes. You know, my mama say, son, they call it a bl they call it a gift, but it feels like a curse. It do feel like a curse. It feel like a curse when family members are about to die and you sit on your bed minding your business trying to watch television and they're saying they're going to find her in her house dead. And you try to ignore it, but then two days later, they're all calling you early in the morning. You can't even eat your breakfast or nothing else because they're talking about, you know, they found her dead. I knew before you found her. I knew before you found her because God tells me. You think that's, you, that's, that's not something that you call a gift. It is a gift, but it feels like a curse. It feels like a curse. But nevertheless, it is what it is because when you're chosen, there's nothing you can do about it. And that's the whole point. You can go ahead and strip. You can go ahead and you're supposed to be an evangelist, bringing people into the kingdom of God. What was that, Jesus? I felt hot. Something wind right there. Hallelujah. The angels will take care of it. Thank you, Jesus. When you're chosen, it's not easy because you got to do what God said, do regardless, because even if you are supposed to be gathering into God's kingdom, working as an evangelist, and you have chosen to gather into the club because you're a club promoter, God is going to judge you as an evangelist. God's going to judge you as an evangelist. He's going to say, I called you, even if you don't even know what you're called to do, I called you to do it. And when you get to heaven, you're going to remember and be judged with the rest of the preachers, even though you think that you're a police officer and God said you're a pastor. The gifts is without repentance. You can be in sexual situations and I can know this person's a pastor. This person is this. This person is that. God has told me to give words to people and I have refused and regretted and been praying for years that that little Hispanic man who worked at the McDonald's in 2012, between 2012 and 2014, and a little Spanish man was working at the McDonald's. He was probably in his 20s or 30s. Around in his 20s or 30s. I want to say 28. Hallelujah. Somewhere in his 20s or 30s, working at the McDonald's right across from the subway station on the Silver Line, Wheelie Road Station. There's a McDonald's. There's a Pizza Hut. There's a little gas station right there, right there on Wheelie Road in Reston, Virginia. He was working at the McDonald's and the Lord told me that that man is supposed to preach the gospel to his people. I didn't know if that was here in America or in his other country, if he's supposed to go back to his country. Now, I've realized that a lot of times when I'm teetering between two things, it's because both things are true. So, yes, he's supposed to preach the gospel here in America, but also in his own country. Nine times out of ten, if he's preaching to his people, he's going to preach in Spanish. And so I was so scared. And I said, no, God, he's going to think I'm crazy. And I refused to give that word. I saw him go to work. He walked in when I walked out. And I said to myself, okay, well, God, if you really want me to say this, then he needs to show up before this bus comes. I turned around and that man was walking towards me. And I don't know how in the world that means that as I was praying and talking and the Lord was giving me the revelation, he was already on his way. He, cause you got to cross the street and the light is a long light. So he must've come out right behind me. And I don't understand how that's possible because he had just went in. Now I'm thinking maybe he just went to go get his check and they handed him his check and he walked out right behind me and I just didn't even know. But when I saw him, I was shocked. And I thought, oh my God, he right there and I have to prophesy to this man. And I just turned, I said, no, because he's going to think I'm crazy. Because I was so upset that I spend so much time on this field because God sent me to social media, but y'all don't listen. The Bible says, believe the prophet so that you prosper. I'm not prospering. Do you see how I look? You see this hyperpigmentation? You see this hair? I got to cut my own hair. You see how I look? I like fashion. I'm not prospering. You prosper when you listen to what I say. Believe the prophet so that you prosper. And I was so frustrated that the people, see family, friends, those who know you after the flesh, those who take care of you and buy you things and do things for you so they think that they're better than you even in the spirit. 
So worried about them not listening and not obeying the voice of God because they don't see nothing in me. You know, Jesus' family didn't see nothing in him. He said, my family are those who do what my, what my father in heaven said. And he left his mother and his brothers outside the door and let them stay there. They snatched him in the house. The Bible says that they thought he was crazy. And I'm not sure if it was the people who tried to kill him or his own family, but I bet you it was his own family that thought he was crazy because the people said he had the devil in him and they was trying to snatch him up. And his family snatched him up, it said, because they thought he was crazy. Go and read your Bible. I'm paraphrasing and using my own modern English, but go read your Bible before they start changing more of it with the portals that they opened, like I said earlier in the video. They didn't think nothing of him. And Jesus left them outside when he was ministering to the people that God sent him to minister to. He left his family outside. Left him outside. I didn't come on social media to chit chat with family. I was going to block them because this is my ministry, because this is where God sent me. But, you know, I started being nice and talking to the family and talking to the friends and entertaining, you know, a little bit of music and beauty pageants and anything just sort of entertaining. Vexing my soul constantly because I see so much stuff. I'm like, God is not pleased with this and he don't like that. And this person is using Jesus name as a talisman, using Jesus name as a good luck charm. Using his name as a good luck charm calling themselves Christians in name only. Remember, go back to what it is I said about how they changed the definition of Christian to anybody that's a white enslaved person, a white free person. That's how we got Christian in name only in this country. Courtesy of the European Americans once again. I didn't come here for that, but y'all don't want to listen. And so I was so vexed and angry and frustrated and whatever. Life ain't going how I want. Broke, busted and disgusted. And I refused to say anything to that man. And when I had to move back to Reston, Virginia, I think that was in 2014. Lord God Almighty, I got on the bus. And when I got on that bus, that bus was passing that McDonald's. And I thought about that man and oh, good God from Zion. He got on that bus and he walked to the back of the bus and he sat in front of me and I said, oh, my Lord, OK, this is time number two, two years later. Now I'm trying to figure out how to say everything I need to say in Spanish. And what if he asked me a question? Lord, help me remember how to speak Spanish. I haven't spoke Spanish in a long time. But you can speak Spanish when you want to flirt with somebody that you have no business flirting with. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to tell you I'm in this battle with you. I got flesh like you. I'm human like you. I'm telling you to do the same thing I have to do. We got to both do it. Get yourself together. It's not easy. Again, it ain't nothing good in this body. When Jesus snatched me into the fire and tried to, I'm going to get the good, bad out. I say, ain't, ain't going to be nothing left. Ain't nothing in here but bad. Y'all give them less of me, Lord, and more. No, 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 no. You don't need less of you. You need none of you and all of Christ Jesus. Because like I said, when he was done with me, there was nothing inside of this but fire. Fire encased in a see-through gold that looked like glass. You know, this about the streets of heaven are like streets of gold, but it's like glass. It's like a golden glass because it's so purified and so clear and transparent, but yet it's solid. That's all that I was filled with fire. You know, the Bible says he makes his ministers flames of fire. See, because y'all think I'm tripping. You want to say I'm lying because that's what the devil is talking to you. The spirit of jealousy is talking to you. Those demons that are living inside of you, I rebuke them and command them to come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're talking to you and you don't know your Bible because the Bible says I have made my ministers flames of fire. And you think everything is figurative when he said there's nothing too hard for God. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Neither has it even entered into the hearts of man what God got planned for us. And so when I'm telling you revelation, experience that I have had personally with God, you don't want to believe it. Go to hell. Repent or go to hell. That goes for you, me, your mama, my mama and everybody else in Jesus name. It's not easy being chosen. That man sat on that bus and I try, I'm just a going and going and worried and fear, full of fear. And then he got off the bus and I was so depressed and so sad and feeling like I didn't have enough time. I was getting ready to say something. I didn't think he was getting off right here. And I knew in my spirit that it wasn't going to be long before he got off that bus. And if I kept on procrastinating, he was going to be gone. That was 2014. It's about to be 2024. I have spent 10 years praying.
Because the Bible said when he tells you to say something and you don't say it, they're going to die, but the blood going to be on your hands. I regret not sending those messages to my cousin-in-law about the stuff that y'all was dealing with in this country in 2020. And then y'all started putting things in your arm and it was killing people and causing them to drop dead. And now they're sad and posting Instagrams. And sister is saying, well, they wasn't going to listen anywhere. It don't matter, sis, because the Bible says you got to tell them anyway. Because they're going to, whatever, but they don't got to listen. And even if they die, that's on them. But the Bible says, if I tell you to say something and you keep sitting there with your mouth closed, I'm going to judge you. The blood is going to be on your hand, the Bible said. So they're not preaching these scriptures no more. Hmm. They're not preaching these scriptures no more. They're not preaching these scriptures no more. So it sounds harsh to you. You feel like, oh, I'm doing too much because you want me to sound like Joe Osteen, somebody that's a self-help guru. You don't know what kind of sex dungeons he got. You know what kind of satanic things he got going on underneath that church because they tell you, oh, some man was so nice and God blessed him and they helped him get this stadium. And thank God I didn't stay where my father told me to stay at. You was full of pride and you love money too much and you want attention too much. And you want everybody to like you and you want everybody to love you. And so all you have to do is say a whole bunch of nice things to make everybody feel good. You got the spirit of flattery. You're a flatterer, which means you're a liar. And the Bible says that every liar is going to hell. But see, they want me to preach like him. I'm not going to hell with them. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hell with them. So as I said, from one system to the next, from one system to the next. <laughs> and it was all a dream. I used to read word up, uh huh. Yeah. A delusion, a strong delusion causing you to believe a lie. You are in a boiling pot and you don't even know because right now the water is a little bit warm. So you think you're in a jacuzzi. <laughs> Feeling good. God's about to turn up the heat. And soon and very soon it's going to be very too late to leave this country. My ancestors left Israel and went to Egypt and then to Ethiopia and then through Uganda into the Congo, through into Nigeria, through Benin and Togo into Ghana. And then they were brought here in slavery. Got on them boats thinking they were gonna make some kind of a money in a new world and got trapped. Got trapped, I believe that was the Dutch and the British that was on the coast of Ghana, the Gold Coast, Accra, the Gaadang Bay, the Gaadang Bay. Look them up. Some of my other ancestors ended up in Spain and Portugal. And then there was a whole situation with the Inquisition. Inquisition, rather. The Spanish Inquisition and killing the Jews, the Blacks, the Protestants, whatever. And, you know, but they had wealth. This is on my mother's side. And so they had wealth. And they were able to go to England and then Ireland. And came on over here. Even on my father's side, the Shirod, some of them, they came over here from Ireland. There's a lot of Black people that came from Europe from Ireland, but you don't understand that. See, the Catholicism, Catholics, you were in Ireland, but before then you was in England, and before then you was in Spain and Portugal, and because of your wealth and because of your association with the Catholics, you barely escaped slavery. You barely escaped slavery. And so they will call you a mulatto because you're half Spanish, but some of the quote unquote Spanish nationals were still black people who married other African black people. And so they would still term you mulatto if one of your people were from Spain and Portugal, living in these British colonies. 50 nifty United States from 13 original colonies. Yeah, anyway. So they survived because they understood the times and the seasons. They knew when to hold them and they knew when to fold them. They knew when to walk away and they knew when to run. Right now, I'm telling y'all, it's time to walk away. But TikTok, look at the clock, it's almost time to run. TikTok, look at the clock, it's almost time to run. TikTok, look at the clock, it's almost time to run. God bless you.